नमस्ते 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 गुड मॉर्निंग टुडे एज वी आर स्टडिंग द स्प्रेड ऑफ इंडियन क्लासिकल डांस ऑल ओवर द वर्ल्ड आई मीन वी हैव बीन मच अवेयर ऑफ द इंडियन क्लासिकल डांस इन यूरोप स्पेशली इन इंग्लैंड और इन यूनाइटेड स्टेट्स ऑफ अमेरिका but we have not looked into the spread of classical dance in other countries and uh, australia is one of the big countries of the world though for us uh, it's recently that we have started approaching and our um, migrating to australia so um, let's study today the indian classical dance spread in australia uh, the connection of australia lying down under with indian dance is evident from late 1940s it was then that the australian audiences were exposed to the highly stylized features of indian dance and themes of hindu mythology and the epic legends of the ramayan and mahabharat that are commonly exposed and expressed through dance over the time they have also experienced the full gamut of indian classical dance forms including bharatanatyam kathak kathakali kuchipudi odissi manipuri chhau and mohiniattam a combination of australian dancers getting fascinated by indian dance on travels to india of indian dancers from india and overseas visiting and performing in australia and of indian dance taking strong enough roots in australian soils have been the ways in which australia grew to familiarize itself with indian dance it has become an important crucible in the world for infusing new energies in it australian dancer louis lightfoot was born in 1902 in victoria and was initially trained to be a architect yes she moved to dance at a mature age and became a significant artist artistic presence in australia she ended up playing a critical role in the revival of kathakali and manipuri forms and in and outside of india in 1937 she visited london and paris securing the rights to perform a number of new ballets including the diaghilev's blue god lightfoot took classes with experts in modern spanish and what was known as hindu dance she was particularly impressed by the performance of uday shankar's troupe and told the women's weekly that she intended to create a new indian ballet on her own on return to australia a two week stopover in india extended to five months as she traveled to kerala kerala kalamandalam where she began study of the complex traditions of kathakali after returning to sydney early 1938 and producing her own authentic version of the blue god in the next half decade she lived in kerala and tamil nadu learning the different techniques of the sacred dance styles kathakali and bharatanatyam keeping herself by teaching classical ballets to children of the raj she became a great publicist of indian dance despised or ignored by indian high culture organized tours by dancing troops in south india and sri lanka worked with film maker k subramaniam at madras and published widely in the indian press louis light food in 1947 brought the young kathakali dancer shivaram 
to Australia and trained a group of Australian dancers to work with him. Next year, they introduced Kathakali dance to the British stage. In 1949, for the Australian National Theatre, she presented Shivaram in a ballet of her own design, Indra Vijayam, and in 1950, he again toured successfully. Performances in Japan, the United States of America and Canada more often took the form of lecture demonstrations in universities and galleries with Lightfoot providing commentary. Shivram made a series of visits to Australia uh, in the last year in 1976. In 1951, Lightfoot had gone to the mountain state of Manipur to learn a third tradition of sacred dance. Here she discovered and popularized a form older than the Hindu traditions. She published a monograph, Dance Rituals of Manipur in 1958. Her recordings of the songs and ritual music was released in the American Ethnic Folkways series in 1960 as the Ritual Music of Manipur. Louis Lightfoot organized Australian, Japanese and North American tours for dancers and drummers from Manipur and Kerala. From the late 1950s, she worked with Shivram to establish an Indian dance school in San Francisco, USA. From 1965, she lived and worked at the Yoga Ashram of Swami Vishnu Devananda in Montreal, Canada. Life food never married. In 1968, she retired to Oakley, Victoria, where she continued to train dancers in the Indian style. She died on May 18, 1979 at Melbourne and was buried in the New Cheltenham Cemetery. The Cochin Indian Express lamented the death of Kathakali Australian mother. She first visited India in 38 and spent considerable time there studying dance. Uh, Louis organized tours by Kathakali dancer Anand Shivaram throughout India and also to Australia in 1947 and 74. Billed as the first Indian dancer to visit Australia, Shivaram's performances were extremely influential as were the classes that he conducted with local dancers. Lightfoot also staged her own Indian-inspired productions in Australia and was responsible for Australian tour of a Manipuri troupe in 1957. The interest sparked by Shivram saw Australian tours by Indian dancers such as Tilakavati in 58, Indrani in 1959, Bhaskar in 62, Chitrasen Ballad in 63 and 72 and Kalakshetra in 66. A Government of India cultural delegation titled Indian Song and Dance Theatre also toured in 62. Indian dancer Jyoti Kana Ray was also active in Australia during this time with productions titled Mystic Dances of India 1955 and Light of Asia 57 involving dancers from the Borden Weiser Company. Indian artists have continued to tour Australia, including Kalakshetra dancers Balagopalan 1978, V. Gayatri 82, and Krishnaveni Lakshmanam 87. The Kathakali Kerala Kalamandalam tour in 1970 included performances in the regional New South Wales, while the famous Bharatanatyam dancer and film star Vaijanti Mala performed at Adelaide, Perth, Melbourne, Canberra and Sydney in 75. Most remarkable was the tour by 12-member Chow troupe, Masked Dancers of Bengal in 1978, which included performances in Darwin, Alice Springs, Tannant Creek and Catherine. More recently, Australian audiences have experienced performances by renowned Indian dancers such as Daksha Sheth, Mallika Sarabhai, Solan Mansi, Birju Maharaj and late Sayukta Panigrahi. As well as performing traditional dance, Daksha Sheth has choreographed contemporary works 
in collaboration with Perth musicians and dancers in the uh, Gilagmesh project. Mallika Sarabhai has also created contemporary works to the music of Australian composer Roger Smalley, Kathy Travers and David Pye. In the 1970s and 80s, increased migration from Asia saw a number of professional Indian dancers settling in Australia as well as exponential growth in the number of Indian classical dance schools. Melbourne based dancer Chandrabhanu studied Odyssey and Bharatanatyam in India. Dr. Chandrabhanu was born in Kangar, the capital of the northernmost Malaysian province of Perli. An early interest in dance led him to study classical Malay dance. Gandang Tirintai under Pamai and study traditional Malay folk dance under various teachers between 1956 and 76, that's 20 years. Chandrabhanu also studied Bharatanatyam at the Usha Prema School of Indian Classical Dance, Malaysia from 1957 onwards. Chandrabhanu arrived in Australia in 71 on a Malaysian government civil service department scholarship to study social anthropology at Monash University, Melbourne. After achieving his BA honours in 74 and a PhD in social anthropology in 1980, in 1974 after completing his BA honours, Chandrabhanu undertook an extended tour throughout South and Southeast Asia, during which time he became studying Odyssey at Orissa Sangeet Parishad Puri under the tutelage of Guru Bijoy Kumar Senapati. Chandrabhanu also continued his training in Bharatanatyam at Bharatanu Chudamani Academy of Fine Arts, Madras, under the tutelage of Guru Adyan Lakshman, which he had begun in 73 and continued to 82. In 76 and 77, Chandrabhanu undertook two research trips to Malaysia to research his PhD. During the second of these trips, Chandrabhanu worked with the Kompalekka Budaya Nagara, the Malaysian National Dance Company, co-choreographing the work Indra Putera and dancing the principal Lo. He also spent time as a guest artistic director and choreographer with Pearly State Dance Ensemble Kangar Malaysia, working in the Gendang Terinai style of classical Malay dance. Chandrabhanu's teaching career began in his second year of study at Monash University when he brought a group of students together. The group was known as Sausena, Malaysian and Indian Dance Ensemble, and was active between 1972 to 76, four years. As a teacher and artistic director of the group, Chandrabhanu trained students, dancers, choreographed several full-length works and produced concerts, which toured Sydney, Canberra and Tasmania. In 1973, Chandrabhanu established Bharatalaya School of Indian and Classical Dance. In the same year, 73, he met his partner, the visual artist Geoffrey Goldie, subsequently one of the strongest driving forces in Chandrabhanu's career. In 1980, Bharatalaya Company of Indian Classical Dance was formed by Chandrabhanu to provide performance group for students of the school. This performance group became known as Bharatam Dance Company in 1985, later expanding and becoming incorporated in 87. As artistic director of Bharatam Dance Company from 85 to 2000, Chandrabhanu choreographed over 20 works which toured throughout Australia, Southeast Asia, Europe and the United States. Chandrabhanu has choreographed almost 50 major choreographic works, productions and performances in Bharatanatyam, Odyssey and contemporary dance styles throughout his career. Amongst this have been a number of Bharatanatyam solo recitals that Chandrabhanu has performed. These include Journey Towards the Hope 2 in 2003, Kulalampur Rasamalika 2002 with vocalist O.S. Arun 
Hans Vihar, Melbourne, quite since 2003, two with vocalist O.S. Arun in Sydney, Dasi Atam 2001 with vocalist O.N. Arun in Melbourne and a Bharatanatyam solo recital 2002 in London. Quite a sense in 1996 in Kuala Lumpur and Bharatanatyam solo 84, The Hog. Chandrabhanu is currently artist director and principal of Chandrabhanu Bharatalaya Academy of Classical Dance and Music in Melbourne. Malaysia born Rimli Abrahim is a unique figure as he studied ballet, modern dance, and Indian classical dance. After working with the West Australian Ballet, he received a scholarship with the Australian Ballet School and subsequently joined the Sydney Dance Company. A, we a chance meeting with Chandrabhanu inspired him to learn Indian dance and after study in India, he performed Bharatanatyam and Odyssey in Sydney and Melbourne under the name Ramachandra. He also performed his own choreography, Adorations, based on the Guru Sishya Parampara. Ibrahim returned to Malaysia in 1982 and founded the acclaimed Sutra Dance Theatre. Another person born in Kerala, Padma Manan, trained initially in the Bharatanatyam style in Hyderabad from 1973. The next year, she began training in Kuchipudi and in 1975 had her Arangetam in both styles. In 1976, she moved to Madras to work with Vempati Chinna Satyam in Kuchipudi and became a member of his dance company. She, which was attached to the Kuchipudi Art Academy in Madras in India, Manon performed extensively with this company and also gave solo performances across the country. Manon moved to Australia in 1987 and established herself in Canberra in 1988. She began her Australian career giving solo performances of Kuchipudi and the first of which was at the National Gallery of Australia in 1989. Manon established Kailas Dance Academy and Company in 1992. She incorporated a school with a design syllabus and teaching training. She mounted productions such as Relations and Ramayana, A Mother Speaks. Later, the Kailash Dance Company was renamed Padma Manan Dance Theatre in 1996 and Manan staged The Woman is for Burning in 97. She on, through this production, she commented on the practice of Sati or Vido Immolation. In 1994, Manan received the Canberra Times Artist of the Year Award. It was for her contribution to the cultural life of Australia and for performing and teaching the classical Indian dance forms of Kuchipudi. With a philosophy that there is always a dynamic within cultures to change, she worked to develop a context in which Kuchipudi could live and grow in Australia. She employed Anglo-Australian as well as Indian Australians in her company and two twice to India with her cross-cultural works. In 1996, she collaborated with Meryl Thangka to create Rasa, which used dancers from both Meryl Thangka Australian Dance Theatre and her own Padma Manan Dance Theatre. She also opened a dance school in Sydney in 1998, which she called the Mudra Dance. Manon left Canberra in 1998. She studied postmodern techniques in Sydney with Russell Dumas and theatre direction and Bhutto with Nigel Calliway. Manon continued her work as a dancer and teacher 
for several years in Netherlands, where she also undertook postgraduate studies in choreography. Padma continued her work in the Netherlands, where she presented contemporary productions across Europe and the USA. She then lived in India for time. It was with the aim of empowering women that Padma set up a dance center in India. Through the center, she worked with women refugees, human rights organizations and children with disabilities using dance to facilitate transformation and healing. In 2008, Manon returned to Canberra, establishing the Mudra Center for Dance there and continuing her multicultural work along with training in pure Kuchipudi. Padma's work is identified by the link between the inner landscape of the artist and the realities of an external world. Padma uses the rich symbolism, myths and archetypal present in Indian dance. She combines these with the breath work, yoga and the understanding of the body, space and time continuum that comes from the Laban movement analysis. Another one to contribute Indian classical dance in Australia. Anandavalli Shivanathan moved to Sydney in 1985 after extensive training in Bharatanatyam and Kuchipudi in India. She established herself as a solo performer and started the Lingalayam Dance Academy in 87. Working within a traditional framework and her, she stood, and her students stage productions such as Shakti 91, the Shavataram 93 and a vision of India 95. In 96, she formed Linga Layam Dance Company performing works including Shivastuti 96, the Divine Plutus 97 and Earth and Fire 2003. The company's recent production Tempest was a collaboration with famed Indian contemporary dancer Ashta Debu. A small collection of programs relating to Sydney based Indian dancer Anandavalli and her Lingayam dance company uh, is included in the program of the concert given in London are the part of the collection of National Library of Australia. Tara Rajkumar is an exponent of Kathakali and Mohiniyattam. She founded the National Academy of Mu Indian Dance, now Academy South Asia Dance in London in 1979. After migrating to Australia, she conducted numerous solo performances and established the Natya Sudha Dance Company in Melbourne. In 1997, she produced the work Temple Dreaming which interweaves her own story with that of Louis Lightfoot. Tara Rajkumar is mentioned in three events in the Ostage database. Temple of Fine Arts was founded in Perth in 1981 with artistic directors Sukhi Shetty Krishnan and Sarasa Krishnan trained in Bharatanatyam, Odyssey and Kathak as well as venturing into ballet and contemporary dance. The company has regular performances in Perth, but is most well known for their huge productions with incredible sets and casts of 50 to 100 dancers. To date, they have staged 16 such productions including Odyssey, Odyssey 1990, A Midsummer Night's Dream 94, Shakuntala 98 and Vishwa Vinayaka 2002. Rukmini Devi studied Bharatanatyam in Odyssey in India. She continued her studies in Bharatanatyam from the Kalaivani School of Indian Classical Dance in Perth. From 1986 to 90, she was a guest artist with Chandrabhanu Bharatam Dance Company. The formation of her own group, the Arthman Project and later Kalika Dance Company saw the creation of works including Apsaras 92, Kali Digambari 95 and Yantra and Devdasi 97, which incorporated text, live experimental music, film and her own visual art. Her solo productions include The Virtual Goddess 98 and Mindimi 99. Relocation to Sydney in 2000 has been a continuation of her 
iconoclastic style of Indian influenced contemporary dance often with the themes of women in society. The Odissi Dance Company was founded in Sydney in 92 by Nirmal Jaina and Chitrita Mukherjee. Nirmal Jaina is son of Surendrana Jaina, a recognized expert in the ancient Odissi dance form. These professional artists all have common threads running through their careers. They have all received training from the great masters of India such as Adyar K. Lakshman, Vempati Chinna Satyam, Sayukta Panigrahi, Birju Maharaj and Deva Prasad Das, ensuring a continuation of technique and style and an understanding grounded in a classical tradition. Their imagination along with the influence of the contemporary dance and learning of it has led to experimentation and then emergence of a fusion of styles. They teach and employ dancers from a diverse range of cultural backgrounds and many have taught their work back to India with critical acclaim. It has been effective in articulating their art form, making Indian dance more accessible to western audiences. They convey stories of traditional mythology with a fresh questioning perspective or explore socio-political themes such as cross-cultural relations and the status of women. The continuing dialogue between Indian dance artists and their contemporaries has meant that the art form has not stagnated. These interactions continue to contribute to the development of contemporary dance in Australia. Today Indian dance in Australia apart from being represented by numerous professional dance artists and companies, dance schools, amateur community groups is also marked by the increasing mainstream popularity of Bhangra and Bollywood. Bollywood the world's largest and the most vibrant movie industry has an old association with Australia. Fearless Nadia was Australian Mary Ann Evans. Even Bob Christo, the English villain in many movies was from Australia. But since the 1990s, particularly the connection between Australia and Bollywood has really taken hold. In the 90s, Bollywood emerged post-economic liberalization of India as a strong globalized industry and India's biggest cultural ambassador to the world. The Joom World Bollywood Dance Company of Melbourne promotes and celebrates Bollywood style and colour through dance in Melbourne. Amit Sarwal is the convener of Australia India Interdisciplinary Research Network ATTRN at the Keen University and co-convener of Bollywood. The National Library of Australia has turned out to be a big repository of the history of Indian dance in Australia. It houses documents from Indian dancers in Australia and visiting groups of Indian dancers. Some of the artists and groups to find representation there apart from these mentioned are also include a small collection including flyers from dance classes and for a performance by Jaya Chekmi Raman and students of Kalaivani School of Indian Classical Dance Arts at Perth Town Hall. A small collection of programs from 1966 Australian tour by a troupe of dancers from the Kalakshetra School. A small collection including a brochure for the Kalabharti School of Indian Dance and a flyer, a flyer for a performance by the Kalabharti dancers festival at the Sydney Opera House Recording Hall for the Festival of Indian Dance and Music at Carnival 85, a collection of two programs for performances by Indrani Rehman at National Theatre Melbourne and Rialto Theatre Brisbane. Apart from the collectibles available at the National Library of Australia, there is the Margaret Walker Dance Archives. The Margaret Walker Dance Archives are professional and personal papers documenting Walker's involvement with and interest in a variety of Australian and international dance organization and companies. 
The material includes administrative records, correspondence, newsletters, diaries, theater programs, subjects and biographical files, newspaper clippings, crack books, dance periodicals and photographs. Companies and organizations represented in the collection include the Boronsky Ballet, Ballet Russe and Trant Theatre, Australian Dance Theatre, Australian Elizabethan Theatre Trust, Ballet Australia, Ballet Victoria, Perioska Dance Company of Russia, Canberra Dance Theatre, Dance Works, Kolobok Dance Company, One Extra Dance, Unity Dance Group, Australian Association for Dance Education, now known as Ausdance, Kalabharati School of Indian Dance and Walker's own groups of dance concert and the Margaret Walker Folk Dance Center. Individual represented in the collection include Diane Blatcher, Margaret Barr, Christian Nair, Beth Dean, Bhagwan Das Verma and Ron Arnold. Walker also maintained files on dance performances from different countries including Indian dance. Contemporary studies in Australia have encouraged research in the aspects of Indian dance of all kinds in Australia. In this context, the work of Dr. Amit Sarwal is the Alfred Deakin Postdoctoral Research Fellow at the Centre for Citizenship and Globalisation CCG at, at the Deakin University, Australia and also the founding convener of Australia India Interdisciplinary Research Network AIIRN is very important. His current research project titled Cross-Cultural Diplomacy Indian Visitors to Australia from 1947 to 1980 is the first systematic theoretically informed and empirically grounded examination of how Australia and India viewed each other in the aftermath of decolonization. His work, Bridging Imaginations, South Asian Diaspora in Australia in 2013, Enrich Relations, Public Diplomacy in Australia-India Relations, 2013, with David Law and Bollywood and others towards the new configuration in 2015 with the Vikrant Kishore and Parichay Patra are significant for our understanding of Indian dance in Australia. Soon his research on South Asian diaspora short stories in Australia would be published as Roots and Routes South Asian diaspora narratives and labels and locations, gender, family, class and caste, the short narr narratives of South Asian diaspora in Australia. Thus you can see that India and Indian dance has not only the performance connection but people have from Indian origin from India have gone, settled there, started teaching, created syllabus sensible to the Australians and started dance companies as well as extensive research in Australia on Indian dance. This is a very positive development for Indian classical dance anywhere in the world. Thank you. Goodbye.